sports movie betting out here? Outrageousness, but a lot of fun last night. As we say, Twitter, or excuse me, gambling Twitter, taken by storm last night. A director opens up 50 to 1, 45 to 1, crashes all the way down to 2 to 1, and then he books, took it off the board last night. But it turns out I don't watch the Oscars, Teddy. I had to watch this to see it play out, and it looks like it was all for nothing. Nevertheless, interesting stuff, Teddy, isn't it? Shut up. You did not spend three and a half hours watching. I, how long, I, how long I that absolutely broadcast? watched the Oscars, Teddy, first time. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and the awards you want to see that you're betting on, you don't know when they're coming. There's no way to watch the Oscars, all right? To bet on the Oscars, there's all kinds of ways. And this is why you don't see betting on the Oscars here in Las Vegas. You see some of it in, uh, in Jersey. We see a lot of it offshore. But where somebody knows the answer to what's going to, it doesn't matter who, somebody knows who's going to win the Oscars before the, those are announced. When that is the situation. You can't bet on it in Vegas. And last night, all rumors, all conjecture, what happened? You know, Cuaron was, what, a three-to-one favorite? No problem. No dice. He ends up cashing the ticket for best director. But the rumor set the odds going nuts. And books had to take it off the board because they didn't know. The info's out. Nobody knows. The info out. Huh? Uh, with that much action, they had to do it. There was really only one upset uh, last night. That was best actress. Glenn Close took money all night. She took money all year. You know, she was minus $5, bet all the way up to minus 1200 Olivia Coleman won the award. That was the only big dog to cash among the major award winners last night. Everything else, chalk, chalk, chalk. Yeah, interesting to see, though, Teddy, because you see, you don't really see this in the realm of sports. And we talk about, like, line movements where if a player sits out, it might go from, like, we're going to see today when we talk about the Bucks and the Bulls. You know, Giannis possibly sitting out, sending it down three, four points. This was an epic crash. And it's interesting because when you're dealing from a sports perspective, there's still other players on the court, you know, referees on the take, whatever it might be. But this is the instance where if somebody knew something, a la, like, the WWE, if you were betting on a fixed match that was already theoretically taking place, it was interesting to see some of the books say, well, keep it up. Some saying, oh, my goodness, somebody help us out here. But that ultimate line crash made for great theater. And again, we talk about as sports gamblers, Teddy, that this can help all realms. Imagine the Oscars getting a spike in viewership over the next decade because you can bet on it. Amazing stuff. I, I can imagine it. I probably had a spike in viewership last night. But again, <laughs> you're not betting on this stuff in Vegas because somebody already knows. A sporting yeah. event, even a fixed sporting event, nobody knows, you know. The guy could miss the shot he's supposed to make or make the shot he's supposed to mix a miss. This is a situation where the outcome is known to some before it's known to all. And the books very, very cautious in those situations. Hence it being bet, uh, being taken off the board last night. Of course, let's not forget they got to keep all the money that poured in on the guy who was supposed to win because he didn't win. So worked out just fine for bookmakers in the Oscars last night. Switching it back to the hard court on Saturday, Teddy. Center stage, 6 p.m., the Carrier Dome on fire. Syracuse takes the lead at the half. Duke comes back with a beautiful second half. Ends up winning and covering by double digits in this one. Emotional game. Jim Beheim out there on the court. You saw his wife with the tears. Jim Beheim with the tears. They honor the family of the uh, deceased member of the community. A lot of emotions going on there. Record crowd north of 35,000 to watch this. And, Teddy, it was kind of interesting to me because coming into this game, you're saying, well, look, I've seen Duke the past couple games, you know, Zion or no Zion, not shooting the three-point very well. That's the way you have to beat Syracuse by shooting over the zone. They still struggle out there to shoot over the zone and still win by double digits in Syracuse. Impressive win by the Duke Blue Devils, Teddy. Sure. I mean, a lot of it was Syracuse missing shots. I mean, the orange shot, what, 21% from three-point mm -hmm. range. Yep. You're not going to shoot at that level and beat Duke. It's just not going to happen. Of course, you know, Duke had already lost to this team once. They'd already seen uh, the 2-3 matchup zone once, and they – it didn't fare great against it in the second meeting. The game stayed well under the total, but the Orange couldn't hit a shot. And when the Orange can't hit a shot, they're not going to win. They're not going to cover. Pre-game emotions high, great. Didn't do you any. <laughs> didn't do uh, Syracuse backers any favors. Uh, Duke with the win and the cover, even without the presumptive number one overall pick in the NBA draft this coming spring. 
Yeah, total stayed under the 144, Teddy. Also, when you saw that closing line at Duke minus five, we talked about it on Friday setting up this game. You know, the advanced numbers without Zion, somewhere between nine and ten points. That came down lower, and I know a lot of people got in and said, hey, this is the right. Syracuse already beat them once on the road. Down Zion, no way they can win. Nice win by the Duke Blue Devils, who are going to face number 20, Virginia Tech, on Tuesday night. And we get back to Zion watch, which will keep you up to date here at SportsbookReview.com when he does take the court again, if he does take the court again. Teddy, you're in Las Vegas right here. It seems like it's the center of the earth, right? Gambling goes on. But there's a guy that lives in the Las Vegas region out there, and his name is Bryce Harper. And a lot of mystery is going on between him and the Dodgers, him and the San Francisco Giants, him and the Padres, him and the Phillies. Mystery teams flying in, flying out, taking meetings up, Teddy. It's heading towards March. We're a week away from March. And it just seems like Scott Boris is working that Twitter and working all the beat writers right now. Will he sign? Won't he sign? Teddy, help me out. You live in Las Vegas. Come on. Ear to the ground. What are we hearing? <laughs> what do we hear is that, uh, first of all, <laughs> Las Vegas really is a hotbed for professional athletes. Obviously, there's no state tax here, so a lot of guys like mm-hmm. to live in Vegas. It's a nice place to be in the offseason. And certainly for baseball. I mean, this has been a baseball hotbed. Chris, Chris Bryant uh, coming from Vegas. Obviously, Harper uh, coming from Vegas and many, many others uh, as well. All that being said, nobody knows what's in this guy's head. I don't know. You don't know. The media doesn't know. But everybody's got deadlines. Everybody's got stories to file. So every day, we've got another Bryce Harper story and another Bryce Harper story and another Bryce Harper story, even though there's no news. When there's news, we'll report it to you. Right now, it's all rumors, conjecture, maybes. Oh, we think kind of could have, would have, should have. I don't know where Bryce Harper's going. You don't know where Bryce Harper's going. Donnie doesn't know where Bryce Harper's going. The media doesn't know where Bryce Harper's going. The odds makers don't know where Bryce Harper's going. Bryce Harper doesn't know where Bryce Harper's going. We'll tell you as soon as we know. Teddy, bringing it back to a little bit of a gambling subject on this one, it's interesting here because if you if you say right now, if we look you know into a crystal ball and say it's either going to be the Phillies on a long term deal, three hundred plus million dollars, it's going to be on the uh, Dodgers maybe a year or two, thirty five million to try to keep them under the luxury tax. But the one thing that is interesting, looking at bet online, it's not about you know v- MVPs. Home run hitting king. That means hitting the most home runs in Major League Baseball. Sitting at plus twenty five hundred at betonline.ag. Seemingly, if he goes to the Phillies, a little bit more attainable there, playing in the smaller ballpark at Citizens Bank, as opposed to if he goes to the Dodgers and paying in Chavez Ravine. Is there any value in that jumping ahead of the line, or just better to have to wait it out and just see where it ends up or see where he goes? There's no value on the this one player is going to win the home run crowd, all right, and a list of 40 players. Zero value in that wager. Doesn't matter if you're taking the longest shot on the board or the favorite. That's not how pros make money betting. You want a little bit of action? Sure. Put you know, a couple of bucks on Harper to win the home run crowd. Although, has he ever won the home run crowd before? And certainly if he plays in the West Coast, he's playing in the NL West and playing all those games in San Diego and San Francisco and L.A. where home runs go to die. I don't want a Bryce Harper to win the home run title ticket in my pocket. Teddy, talking about tickets in your pocket here, Major League First. Look, going to be tough to cash some tickets here, one would think, on the Toronto Blue Jays. You know, looking at the Boston Red Sox, the New York Yankees. I mean, hey, look, at least you got the Orioles in the division, but the Rays are an upstart team as well. We'll take a look at the final team in the AL East. That is Toronto, 73-89 and 89 last year in complete rebuild mode. Not too long ago, Teddy, one of the more exciting teams in baseball, Edwin Encarnacion, Jake Donaldson in that lineup, Joey Bats in that lineup, all foregone conclusions at this point and looking forward to the future. Marcus Stroman, you're going to hang your hat on him, Teddy? 5.54 ERA. XFIP was a little bit better last year, but a team clearly in rebuild mode. And if you are in rebuild mode in the AL East, could get ugly out there. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, the Orioles are still worse <laughs> than yes. Toronto. Significantly worse for what it's worth. But we are talking about a team that was uh, lost about 10 units for their backers last year, 97 They were a sub-500 team at the Rogers Center. They were a sub-500 team on the highway. They were the second worst team in baseball. This one really stood out to me. On the run line, They, when they were winning as a favorite, they were only winning by one. When they were losing as a dog, they were losing by multi-run margins. Only team in baseball that was worse on the run line, Baltimore. And this is another one that surprised me because it wasn't one of these deals like all season long they were cashing a bunch of over tickets, but... When all was said and done, at the end of the year, nobody in baseball cashed more overtakes than the Toronto Blue Jays last year. And you talked about that pitching. We don't like the starting staff. We don't like the bullpen. They're in division with a lot of teams that can hit. No surprise here if the Blue Jays 
are a decent over team on a game-in, game-out basis again this year, much the way they were in 2018. 